Upwatch, Upwatch, the race for top six. Yeah. Greetings and salutations, my 12th mandem. Well, what a start to the season it has been. I'll be honest with you, the way we started the season, I had to ask who our ops really are this season. And the answer was ourselves. To be more specific, Captain Slabby and Potato Boy. These men have been playing against us for the longest. Ah, internal sabotage. But 1010 ran these ops down and made them do 10 toes out the first team. The threat has been neutralized and the gang is looking stronger than ever. A couple new members with mad heart and bad madism have been added in. A new boss calling the shots and a new product to flood these premier streets with. The takeover, the breaks over. We want our titles back. Now that the internal ops have been eliminated, it's time to target everyone else. One by one by damn one, we are gliding on our ops. A couple have been victimized already. The chatty patties on the telly are talking to you and the streets are rattled. So rattled that one of our ops have already sacked their boss. Fatality. Tommy Tuck is gone. Chelsea have sat the German. Man like Todd Hallabaloo, he has a super itchy trigger finger. Typical American, even flexing that second amendment right on UK soil. Rattled, the bridge is over, the bridge is over. Didn't they sign players for 2 kill to rebuild it? Ah, what a mockery. The transfer market just closed, the season's only just started and they've already ghosted Tommy by force. Man added all these stars to the network but lost all the power before season three even began. Canceled, woo, this was ruthless. Hallabaloo, he waited until they got Abba through the door with Tuchel's relationship. You know Pierre Emerick is sitting there thinking, Abba Mahu, Abba Mahu, what? Obama, why did I leave Barca for this nonsense? But wherever Obba goes, drama follows. Drama King. This is volume two of this street sweeper bringing his brand of rubbish back again to the Premier League. What must all the newbies be thinking? The man them signed to play for a European champion with pedigree, but now they're playing for a Potter of Brighton. The boy from Hogwarts cast a spell of Expelliarmus to take the job right out of Tommy Tuchel's hands. Nobody wanted to give Tuchel the golden handshake because when Tommy gets mad, he doesn't let go of hands. He can be a real Conte like that. Tommy's show is cancelled. There is a new show in West London, Graham Potter and the burning of the bridge. To be fair, I really like Graham Potter. He's a sick coach. He's a real football man. He had Brighton balling on a budget. He develops players and gets the best out of them before moving them on for big peas. But this ain't Brighton. Brighton Pier and Chelsea Bridge are not the same. Potter's only just getting used to eating burgers. He ain't ready for steak yet. Man's skipping levels. You see what a win against United can do for you. 10-10 put him on the map and gas Chelsea into replacing proven levels with Graham. I'm telling you, 10-10 is playing 3D chess. Man, we can our ass without even playing them. These West London Crips are the first ups that we're picking off. Now Potter has a decent squad to walk into. If he can handle the names and the expectations, he can get them playing some beautiful football. 255 million pounds worth of new talent in the squad. They went ham at the end of the window. I can't lie. I was pissed they signed for Fana. It's crazy money, but I rate this you highly. He is quality. Man didn't want to see him with the Pagans. It's a shame. Sterling's a big boy signing as well, and he's already started quite well for them. Raheem the Dream is so underrated still. He is proven levels, but he still don't get enough of his flowers. Potter's reunited with Cucurella, who's another good signing. You think he knew he was going to come link him in a month? Coincidence? I don't believe in them. Koulibaly, Zakaria and Oba all experienced decent players but them man don't worry me at all. They will worry Chelsea more than their ops. It could be interesting but I see trouble ahead. Let's see what happens. Now we go from one sack German to a German on the edges. Kloppy and the Scousers are falling to pieces. <laughs> Love to see it. 1010 has already tangled with these men and humbled them into silence. They were so vexed when they got home that they slapped up Bournemouth. They hit them for nine. That's cause that's all Klopp was saying during training after the beating we gave them. Nine, 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 but it's peak. Them man have wasted all their magic asthma pump energy on devastating Scott Parker and them man there. They've left nothing for the rest of the season. They are finished. Greatest team ever, yet they are habitual runners up. The maths is not calculating. And all they have to show for this amazing seven years is one of everything. The scouts are some binary bad boys. One trophy, then zero, then one, then zero, one, then one. One than zero. <laughs> to see it. Woo! They've got problems everywhere on the pitch. Let's start with their lighty boy band backline. The lead singer, the one with the ponytail. Apparently Virgil is the best defender ever. They called him the GOAT but man's been moving like a baby deer. Bambi Bambi. This deer, this deer, this deer. This deer is full of fear. He don't get too near. He just keeps his hand behind his back like he's getting nicked. My man's looking shaky and so is that backup dancer Joe Gomez. Joe is getting all the steps wrong. Man's doing the floss when he's supposed to be doing the running man. This backup dancer ain't making it to the front row. And then you got Trent I don't defend the Arnold. This one is the bad boy of the group because the boy is bad at defending. All he does is whip it like he's in the kitchen. But man whips it so many times in games he's permanently dizzy. That's why he can't even see the wingers coming at him. Hence why he always stands still. He ain't even got dreads. It's a normal afro with whiplash. Now, let's have a look at their attack. I can't talk about their midfield, it's just a bunch of labourers past their prime. No, no, let's look at their gassed up forwards. I want to start with the 100 million euro grind Lukaku. How can a man's name be Darwin but his game is so far from evolved? This brother is still at Neanderthal stage of development. So far he has miscontrolled 722 passes, apologised for 946 terrible shots and watched more games than he's played. There is no way 1010 wanted him. He just suckered the scouts into blowing their whole budget on this basic bish. 1010 again, 3D chess, I keep telling you. And what the hell has happened to the Egyptian king? He ain't been the same since he got that contract. He was 
score him when he was hungry. But since Mo got that big 250 a week, he has been eating. Mo Salah has been saying no salad, only shawarma and chibas habibi. Shukran. Man's moving like a kebab, just getting wrapped up in yam by every fullback in the league. Then there's Luis Diaz, the little engine that could. He ain't been too bad, but he ain't money. They are missing the African giant differently. What then man gonna do without him? Life post money is killing them shah, but it's got me like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love to see the demise of the false empire. The globalution is crumbling. Jorgen's excuses are getting more and more elaborate. And I, for one, love hearing them. The rants tickle me. <laughs> I've even seen Klopp out trending. Where do these scousers think their next manager can take them? They peaked. I can't wait to see what goes wrong for them next. Now, let's have a look at the noisy neighbours. There is only one thing to talk about. Erling Haaland is a cheat code. This is one cruddy brother. Oh my goodness! Back to back hat tricks. Soon as the ball is anywhere near the box, it's his ball. This giant is a true Viking. He is from the lineage of Thor. He has a hammer in his left foot. These money crips have a real shooter in the gang. And he lives just round the corner. We got work to do to catch these man up. We're gonna keep an eye on the block and look for weaknesses. Their defence is a good starting point, but man need to find a solution to Erling. He don't even need to touch the ball often to get hat tricks. This is a big problem. Then we have Spuds. I don't know what to make of them. They don't play good football, but they get results. It's a good habit. Conte is a winner, but it's Spurs. These men suffer from anti-trophy syndrome. So really, man, don't need to worry about these ups. They ain't in the same war as everyone else. They have been pretending for decades. They're just here to make the league interesting for everyone else. The mad thing is they have some real shooters, but their shooters only shoot for sport. They ain't aiming at nothing real. That's why they built a brand new stadium without a trophy room. Football heritage. No trophy is in their DNA. However, I do think they'll get top four. And finally, Asna. Asna, Asna, Asna. I'm still enjoying the slapping we gave them the other day. I have been enjoying the fallout and sipping on salty tears of Asna fans for days. But credit where credit is due. They have started the season really well. They even stayed top after we topped them up. They only usually top at the opening day of the season alphabetically. This is real progress. It's looking like it's all for something. These North London bloods are trying to rise up. They got a couple new members and their young Jesus stepping up. They're making noise on these Premier Streets. Couple members I rate highly. Saliba, Odegaard and Gabriel Jesus. These men set pace for this team. Saliba's coming and instantly looks bousy. Silk is smooth. He reads the game well. He loves a tackle. He can play. He can pass. And he scored a banger. He's trying to rise up the rankings. Odegaard is a baller. A baller with an engine. Capitain. This Norwegian is icy. His only problem is he likes to flirt with the ball too much. Touch, touch. Pass, pass. Brother, at some point you just gotta hit it. Shoot your shot. He scored a couple, but he should have more. Gabriel Jesus has been quality for them as well. That tenacious chipmunk is on stuff. He is loving being first choice week in, week out. No more side my life. He ain't prolific, but you have to give him his depth. He puts in work and he has other qualities. But scoring against us is not one of them qualities. They got couple real ballers still. Martinelli and Saka are also a big problem. Zinchenko has been a quality addition. They have a bunch of talented young bucks, but this is still Asna. These men are our sons. Man can never worry about Asna. Our ops can be got at. We are not the finished article by a long way, but we are on the come up. The Europa League game was just a hiccup and a timely reminder that the gang ain't fully up to scratch yet. Some of the members may never be again. The OG Triple OG in the gang needs to hang up his boots. Ronaldo is looking old. I don't want to see him like this. His game is horrible. He looks like he just wants to score, but he doesn't want to play. He looks so slow. Man can't still be on these Premier Roads at 37. Couple other members need to be excommunicated as well. I know it's usually blood in, blood out when it comes to gang business, but I will happily let these men go with a severance package. Frederick, I'm sick of this fake Brazilian. His first touch is a clearance. Brazilian ballers do flip flats. Fred does flip flop. And his anti Brazilianism is rubbing off on Casemiro. Man's playing like he was running on sand. Flip flop. San, do these men think that they're playing on Ipanema Beach? I have plenty of time for Casemiro. He will adapt. He better not have that Brazilian midfielder at United curse. His five Champions League titles should make him immune to that curse. He will come good. He's too good not to. Once again, our best players were our new signing. Ericsson again. Some of the passes this guy pulls off are outrageous. What a signing. We were dead as soon as he came off. Malasia was top tier once again. He's so good that Potato Boy can't even get first. Thursday night minutes. You love to see it. And Lissandro was our best player when he came on. Man got violated with that nonsense penalty call, but this guy is such a baller. His passing and carrying of the ball is something else. Martinez is a general. The new members are on stuff, but the gang still has some weak links. We got work to do, but the gang is only just forming. We are on the come up. The occasional L is necessary to keep these men on their toes and remind them how hard we have to work to pick off our ups. But I believe in 10-10. Come on United, thank you please.